Hey folks, welcome back to the Off Grid Workshop. My name is Nigel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about solar and a couple of approaches that you can take to try and size your solar system uh, for your van or your motorhome. So the first option and what a lot of people do is that they just try and put as many solar panels on the roof as they can fit. And for people that are serious about off-grid travel, especially in the winter time, this is a good approach because you make use of what for a lot of people is kind of dead space on their roof and you get the optimum uh, for trying to produce energy and stay off-grid, charge your batteries, all of those sort of things. The challenge obviously with motorhomes and vans, especially if you have a van that's already converted is that you're dealing with skylights, roof vents, uh, satellite dishes, various obstructions on the roof which makes it difficult sometimes to just have big nice solar panels that fill up the whole roof. So often it's a bit of a game of Tetris where you're trying to figure out okay can I fit a 120 watt panel, can I fit 150 watt panels and if so how many of them because you're trying to match the all of the solar panels that you have on the roof. There's no point in having a few 300 watt panels and a few 100 watt panels unless you're going into different charge controllers or wiring them uh, carefully so that you get the most output out of them but realistically if you're mixing panel sizes you're losing some efficiency in your solar uh, no matter how you do it unless you have separate MPPT charge controllers in which case then you get all of the, the throughput from the panels uh, but yeah that's broadly a, a very common way of sizing a system which is just to fill your roof with as much as you can fit on there. Solar panels are relatively inexpensive for what they can produce so it's not a bad approach and it's actually the approach that I took on my van, filled it with as many solar panels as I could put on the roof. The second approach is to try and size the system, the solar system, uh, a little bit more uh, calculated so that it matches kind of your batteries and also your usage and this is a uh, also quite a common way of doing it but it's a little bit more complicated because it varies from person to person depends on the type of travel you do depends where you travel the time of year so there's a number of different variables that can affect uh, the uh, situation and how much energy you get from the sun and I'll explain this a little bit so essentially what happens is in the summer when the sun's high in the sky we have long days you get a lot of throughput from your solar panels in the middle of winter i.e. December you get very little throughput because the sun's very flat in the sky very close to the horizon and uh, the days are short as well so you get a limited window that you can capture solar and if your panels are flat on your roof and the sun is low to the horizon it's not an optimum angle to be charging and, and receiving that sunlight sometimes it, it can actually not re receive much at all obviously in those instances it would be way better if your panels were oriented much more perpendicular to the sun like that um, but you can still size things and I'll take you through an example here. So I've got VRM up here on my phone and uh, this is our very system here. So obviously this is a very substantial system but it'll give you an idea of what can happen and, and give you uh, sort of some a real world example of what often happens in vans because often I hear people say I have a solar panel on my roof but it doesn't charge my battery. I, my battery is constantly running down when I'm running things on the battery and the reality in those situations is often people that are in that situation have 100 watts of solar on their roof they have 200 or 300 watts of lithium battery sorry amp, amp hours of lithium battery in their van they have a two kilowatt inverter and they're running a microwave and a kettle and all these different things and even in the middle of summer a 100 watt panel is never going to keep up with the amount of energy that they're taking from that battery so that's what you're always trying to do is to whatever you use from your battery you're trying to replace that with new energy that you produce from the sun so i'm going to take you through an example here so uh, just quickly to demonstrate what we have we have a three kilowatt inverter we have uh, 915 watts of solar coming through our solar charge controller here and we have 560 amp hours of lithium battery obviously that's considerably more than most people will have in their van but it'll give you an idea of how even with 915 watts we are currently not able to keep up with the demand on our battery and this is often what happens in motorhomes so on this we run the entire off-grid workshop here so that includes things like a heat gun like this which is comparable to an induction hob, a double induction hob. So this is a two kilowatt heat heat gun. So a, a double induction hob would be fairly similar. Uh, some air fryers would be similar. Those sort of high draw ap appliances, uh, that would be comparable to that. And so it's not something that we have on for an hour. 
it'll be on for 10 seconds here, a minute there, 20 seconds, et cetera, et cetera. Very similar to how you would use those sort of appliances in your van. So the kettle goes on, it's on for a minute while it boils water, then it's off. So for a minute it's pulling 1,500 watts from your inverter, then it's off for several hours, but it still uses a lot of energy from your battery. And if you're not connected to electric hookup, then your solar panels have to be able to replace that energy, or you'll just slowly drain your battery until you have no power left in your battery. So I'll take you through VRM here. So on the screen, what you'll see is the top right, the green section on the top right is the AC loads. So that is what is drawing power through the inverter from the batteries. The bottom left is our actual battery state of charge. So currently we're sitting at 31% and slowly what's happening currently is through the week as we work in the workshop, the batteries get lower and lower, the solar is, is not able to keep up with getting them back up to 100% state of charge. And then over the weekend, when we have lim li limited use here in the workshop, then the solar catches up, gets them maybe up to 85, 90%, and then slowly through the week, they drop back down. And that's just an indication that our solar setup is not sufficient for replacing the amount that we're pulling from the batteries. And so that would be very common in a motorhome where potentially you're away, you're wanting to be off grid for five or seven days and slowly, on day one, you use say 15% of your battery, but your solar is able to put in 5% back. Then day two, you use 15 to 20% of your battery again, your solar is able to put back 5% of your battery. By, by day five, day seven, you're down to 30% of your battery state of charge, and then you're looking for an electric hookup. And it's the only reason for that is because your solar is not able to keep up with the demands of your battery. So that's why it's very important to have them aligned so that your solar is producing enough energy to replace the power that you're using from your batteries. So here you can see on the screen, bottom left, the state of charge of our batteries currently, and we're recording this on a Saturday morning after a very hectic, busy week, full week of installs here in the workshop, we had 31% state of charge. This morning when I actually got to the workshop, it was like 19% state of charge, probably the lowest that these batteries have ever been. Uh, the top right hand side is an average draw of everything, just sort of standby usage in the workshop here. So it's fairly heavy consumption. We've got quite a lot of lights that are running off the system. And that doesn't even include when we're running things like the uh, heat gun and various other bits and pieces here, charging laptops, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then as we can see in the bottom right hand side, the solar out of the 915 watts of solar panels that we have, we're currently producing around 600 currently. So today is a sort of classic, horrible British summer day where it's windy, there's been a little bit of rain every now and then, there's lots of cloud cover, the clouds are moving, coming, going, coming, going. So the solar's up and down all the time. And that's the challenge with solar is that you never get a constant like a mains charger where it's like, okay, it's 15 amps all the time as long as it's plugged in. With solar, you're up and down all the time. And so, what we can see here is by now, at the time of recording this video, it's nearly 4 p.m., we're at 31%, which means that the solar panels have been in sunlight for, or at least in daylight, for a, a good portion of the day. We're also recording this at the beginning of August, so it's really good time of year to produce solar. And even then, with all of that, our batteries are not keeping up with the usage, and our solar is not able to replace the power that we're using from the batteries. And so there are a couple of options here in this example. Number one, we increase the size of our solar array, or number two, we add another battery to the bank. And I'll talk through some of the implications of either of those options. Uh, starting off actually with number two, if we were to put another battery into the bank here, obviously it would give us a third more capacity to what we have currently. So we'd go from a 560 amp hour system to what's well, roughly eight, 850, 900 amp hours of capacity, thereabouts, which would be awesome. Is that maths right? No, around 800, yeah, maybe. 830 amp hours, call it, whatever, somewhere around 850, anyway. Um, so it would give us significantly more capacity, which is awesome. The challenge with that is that it's more batteries that the solar panels have to replace power in. So let's say we do that. We then have much more capacity that we can draw from uh, in, in the use here in the workshop. 
but what that means is that the solar then has 900 or 850 amp hours of battery to replace power in as opposed to 560. So considerably more power that the solar panels have to produce. And if the sun is already getting lower to the horizon, less throughput uh, from the solar panels, it's going to struggle to keep up with recharging those batteries every day even more. So in this instance, actually what we need to be looking at is increasing the solar capacity rather than increasing our battery capacity. Uh, so it's, it's, we probably have enough storage. However, if we get a, several days of overcast days, then potentially we won't have enough storage. But we definitely need to be increasing the solar array and how much solar we have in the workshop here. So let's translate that to a motorhome application or, or situation. So let's say you have a 200 amp hour lithium battery, you have 200 watts of solar, and let's say you use on average 80 amp hours of your battery's storage uh, on a given day on average. So 200 watts of solar would produce roughly around 15 amps of charge at its sort of maximum capacity or average capacity, should we say, if it had good sunlight and the conditions were optimum. Obviously, as I've already mentioned and explained, your solar is fluctuating all the time. So sometimes you're getting more than your solar panels are actually rated at. Sometimes you're getting considerably less because of the positioning of the sun, whether there's clouds, the angle of your panels to the sun, all those different factors that you have to consider. But let's just say for argument's sake that your panels produce 15 amps of charge throughout the whole period that there is sunlight. To replace 80 amp hours of used power from your batteries at 15 amps of charge, you'd need that good sunlight and perfect conditions for between five and six hours, which even for this time of the year, mid-August in the summer here in the UK, that's a little bit of a tall ask and a tall order to get those sort of perfect conditions. And so that just gives you an example where potentially 200 watts of solar for that sort of use requirement and that battery storage is actually not enough. So that person potentially needs to look at getting 300 watts of solar or even 400 watts of solar so that they can charge the power that they use much quicker than uh, waiting. And then potentially you have a couple of days that are overcast and dreary, you're producing, let's say on average, seven amps of charge and you just, then your battery is not able to be recharged and you're not able to keep up with your usage. So there we go, folks. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or if there's anything that I've missed or got wrong in the video, then let us know down in the comments below. We'd love to hear. And obviously, as always, uh, we would love you to reach out to us. Uh, we've got a mailing list as well, which is down in the description as well. You can uh, join that. We can send exclusive offers and help and tips and all that sort of stuff uh, to people that are on that list. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.